it is day four of our seven days of crochet, which is my gift to all of you to say thank you for another great year. So today it is day four. And the hint was, first of all, the colors being gray and white. And second of all, <laughs> and second of all, the fact that of the four varieties of this animal, I managed to pick the one <laughs> that doesn't technically fit our established theme. <laughs> so let's open it up and see what happened. There is our little bag. We are making a taper, but technically it's the Malayan taper. So at this point I feel like a lot of you have guessed that we're doing South American animals. Well, that was always the plan. Looking at this map of tapers, you'll see that there are three of them. Three that would have, at 75% of them, would have fit within this theme. And way over there, there's one in Malaysia instead. But I liked him being all cute and stripy. <laughs> so we're just going to say that he's visiting his cousins. <laughs> Let's get into it and don't forget to watch to the end of the video to get a clue as to what we're making tomorrow. Okay, so just as a quick reminder of what you're going to need for day four, the taper. You're going to need eight ply, 100% acrylic yarn in grey and white. You're also going to need a pair of nine millimeter safety eyes. Some polyester stuffing, though this project is suitable for yarn scraps if that's what you've got available. A 3.5 millimeter hook, scissors, a couple of stitch markers or bobby pins. And if you could have a needle available just to add a couple of little details to his face, that's a good idea. Now, just because we are going to be working in white for a chunk of this project, I'm going to put some base card down. Okay, so we are going to grab our grey and we're going to start with a magic ring of six. Now you can of course chain two and put six single crochet into the second chain from your hook instead if you would prefer to do that. then going to work two rows of six single crochet for a combined total of 12 stitches. So there is his tiny trunk with a little burr. It's not like a burr. It's not a full-sized elephant. It's just a burr. Then in row four we are going to work three single crochet. And then three increases. And I do work mine as invisible increases. And all that means is I work the first stitch of them through the front loop only. And then the second stitch of them through both loops. It's a personal preference thing. I personally think it looks better on the finished creature. And that has brought our round up to nine stitches in total. For row five, we start with four single crochet. We then work four increases. And then we have one stitch left in our row and we're going to work a half double crochet into it. So we do that by yarning over our hook, inserting into the stitch, yarning over and pulling up a loop, leaving us with three loops. And then just going to yarn over and pull through all three. So the half double crochet is basically just a slightly taller single crochet and it's what's going to help us curve our potato into an appropriately rounded potato shape. Row six starts with five half double crochet. So that's five more exactly like that one we did at the end of the last row. We are then going to work seven single crochet. And a half double crochet to finish the round. I love his little trunk. Row seven starts with five half double crochet. And then eight single crochet back to the start of our round. Row eight starts with a single crochet. Then two half double crochet.
two increases. Now those are the top of his head and they're going to help his back curve appropriately. Two half double crochet. And then six single crochet back to our starting point. Perfect. So at this point, his head should look like kind of a half formed comma. In row nine and 10, we're gonna form his little ears. So make sure you've got your bobby pins or stitch markers handy. We are going to start with three single crochet. And then in the next stitch, working in the front loop only, we are going to put five single crochet. Just all into that same stitch. So one, two, three, four, and five. Then just going to use one of our markers to mark the back loop of that stitch that we didn't use. Because we'll use it in the next round instead of the stitches of the ear. We're then going to work three single crochet across the forehead. And then this is where we want to put our second ear. So once again, in the front loop only, we're going to put five single crochet. Fold it forward and mark the back loop of that stitch. Now it should be noted that because we won't be working into those stitches in the next row, this row is going to have a higher stitch total than the ones around it, just by nature of having those basically eight extra stitches. We are then going to work seven single crochet back to the start of our row. So they will be his ears. Just give me one more row to prove it. So row 10, we start with three single crochet. We're then going to fold the ear forward, find our marked back loop, and work a single crochet into that instead. Slide your marker out at this point. Then skipping the five stitches of the ear, so one, two, three, four, and five, we are then going to work three single crochet across the forehead. So that locks that first ear into place. And brings us to the second ear where we're going to do the same thing. So fold the ear forward, find our marked back loop, work a single crochet into it. Skip the five stitches of the ear and work three single crochet down the side of the head. Now that should leave you with just four stitches left in your row, and we're going to work an increase into each of them. Let's take this other marker out. So there is his little head with its two little ears, looking like a watering can. So in the next row, we're going to be creating his front legs, but first we need to get all the way around down to the other side. So we start with five single crochet. Then an increase at the top of the head just to keep that back curving slightly. Then six single crochet down the side. Bringing us to where we want the first leg to be. So this leg is worked all in one stitch and it's known as a five treble crochet cluster. Uh, but I'm going to show you exactly how to do one of those, but I just want to preface this by saying you, you can use whatever bubble, popcorn, or puff stitch you're most comfortable with for this if you don't want to do a five treble crochet. It shouldn't have an, a very big impact on the overall piece. So, to do a five treble crochet cluster, we start by yarning over our hook twice, inserting into the stitch, yarning over and pulling up a loop, leaving us with four loops in total on our hook. We then yarn over and pull through the first two, and yarn over and pull through the next two, leaving us with a treble crochet that's kind of partially done and it's added another loop to our hook. So that's kind of our treble crochet nub and we want to make five of those all into the same stitch. So we'll do one more together, yarn over twice, insert into the same stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through the first two loops on your hook and then yarn over and pull through the next two loops on your hook. So there is our second nub and you'll see that it's added our third loop to our hook. So I want you to do that three more times. Mm -hmm. 
like so, leaving you with six loops in total on your hook. Then just yarn over and pull through all six of those loops. And that is his first little leg. So being careful not to lose a stitch where this cluster connects, we are going to work four single crochet across his tummy. And then we're going to do another five treble crochet cluster in the next stitch. Like so. Then it's just a single crochet to get us back to the start of our round. So in row 12, we're gonna start by working 19 single crochet, changing to our white in the 19th stitch. So that color change will fall in your second foot here. And we're going to grab a strand of our white. Just pop those eyes somewhere else. And we're going to work a color change. So there's not many in this pattern, but how you do them is you insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop of your existing color, hold that color out of the way, grab a strand of your new color, pinch it at the base of your stitch on the inside of your work, then yarn over and pull through both loops tug on the tails to tighten it down. And you'll see what that gives you is a finished stitch in our grey, but your white is now on your hook ready to go. Now rather than knot those two ends together, instead I'm just going to work over the top of them for a couple of stitches, which just stops them unravelling. But in the meantime, we are going to stop and insert our eyes. So your eyes are going to go into row five, counting from the tip of his nose, one, two, three, four, and five. And I'm just going to loosely place mine on either side of his head. And then just sort of move them up and down one stitch until <laughs> it looks normal. There we go, so there's mine. And if I count across the top, I've got one, two, three, four visible stitches between them. I always manage to put my eyes in crooked no matter what I do. <laughs> but I'm happy with those, so I'm going to snap my backs on. And yes, I do these backwards. It gives me an extra pop on the tiny little eyes that I'm using, and I prefer that to just getting one pop because the stem is really short. But do yours however you are comfortable. There we go. And now we'll just work the final stitch of row 12. Sorry about that. So now we are going to work three rows of 20 single crochet for 60 stitches in total. And there we go. So yeah, I know one, I know stripes aren't the most fun to make, but just keep in mind that baby tapers have spots on them, so at least we're doing an adult one, which is, which is just one big stripe. So in the next row, we will be creating his back legs. We start by making 15 single crochet in our white, and we're going to change back to our gray in the 15th stitch. So that's 14. And this is the 15th where we're changing to our grey, just pulling it across from where it is on the inside. We are going to then work another five treble crochet cluster, or whatever popcorn puff or wobble that you worked before. So there is his third leg. And then we're going to work three single crochet across his tummy. And then a final five treble cluster to finish the round. But we're going to change back to our white during it. This is actually not as hard as it sounds. So I want you to start the same way we've been doing every other cluster, getting ourselves up to five of those treble nubs on our hook. So, so six loops in total. And then instead of yarning over and finishing with the grey, we're going to yarn over and finish with the white. So of course, 
if you're having trouble like maneuvering those strands of yarn around I understand that some people might uh, just finish off with the gray and change back to your white in the next stitch around it's not a big deal and there we are at the end of row 16 now row 17 starts with three single crochet then four decreases and I am working invisible decreases which just means I work my decreases using the front loops only just like the invisible increases uh, this is a personal preference kind of thing um, if you I just think it looks better on the finished object and then four single crochet changing back to our gray in the fourth stitch and then in our gray we're going to work five single crochet to finish the round and we are officially done with our white so we can now take a moment and trim that off And I love it when I end up with like kind of just enough for a project and then that'll be great for adding details to other projects later. And we're going to take some stuffing and we're just going to stuff him. It doesn't have to go into his nose but it should you should pack his head and the rest of him fairly firmly. Till he is a nice juicy tater tot. Then working just in our grey we're going to work the final two rounds. So row 18 is four repeats of two single crochet and then a decrease. So that's our first one and we're going to do that three more times. So that's our second one. Our third. And our fourth. And it should leave you with 12 stitches in your round. Then we are just going to work six decreases. And finish off. So you will have this little hole at the back, back of your taper. That is factory standard. No, kidding. Um, we're going to take the remaining strand and we're just going to pull it through the front loops only of those six stitches. Or at least the first five. It doesn't matter so much if you don't get it through the final, the final or sixth stitch. And just give it a little pull. Closes shut like a drawstring bag. And just insert your hook from inside the taper and pull it away inside. Give him a little squidge back into shape. So there is our little taper. And now I am just going to take my needle and a little bit of white yarn and just stitch on some whites to his eyes. Just because I think it's super cute. If you want to keep this project completely no so, just don't do this step. There we go. There is our finished Malayan taper, who is visiting his South American cousins, the mountain taper. finished Malayan taper. I hope you can all forgive me for making the wrong kind of taper. In my defense, after I designed him he was so cute I just couldn't bring myself to abandon him. I felt he just needed to be needed to be shared. So your hint for day number five, ooh, which is this big one, but I might be clickbaiting. Sorry guys, some of the bags didn't fold up as nicely as the others, but the, so the colors for day five is just green. Just green. That's all you need. Now your hint for this creature. This animal has three eyes. Yeah. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs>